My name is Ron Hoffman and this is a true story of what I call my missing three hours that started on July 1st and ended on July 2nd, 1966. July 1st, 1966 in the early morning NASA launched Explorer Spacecraft 33, a satellite that was to provide data on solar plasma energetic particles and magnetic fields in the upper atmosphere. July 2nd, 1966. France tested their first nuclear bomb. It was said to come of French Polynesia's Mururo Atoll was shattered by an explosion of unbelievable force. Within a second, the azure tropical sky flashed bright orange, and was ruptured by a towering radioactive cloud that mushroomed into the atmosphere. The placid lagoon was stirred into a tempestuous cauldron, while the coconut trees on the white sand islands were bent by the sheer force of the nuclear explosion. These are two very good reasons why this UFO might have been in Earth's atmosphere on those two days on July 1966. Or maybe they had nothing to do with my alien abduction and my missing three hours. I suppose I will never know what put that UFO just outside of Palm Springs North in a heavily wooded area at night around 1.20 a.m. on July 2nd, 1966. My name is Ron Hoffman, my father was Master Sergeant in the Green Beret Army Special Forces and was very good friends with his captain, which I will leave his name out of it. My father and mother went to their house that was located in a community in Northwest Dade County called Palm Springs North. Palm Springs North was the last development northwest of Dade County. From west of there was nothing but woods and everglades. My parents went to play cards that night. It was the very first time and the last time they would get together to play cards. They had a son named Doug that was 13 years old and at the time I was 11. Doug and I got to know one another and then decided to ride our bikes all over PSN, just for fun, we were out way past midnight. On July 1st which turned into July 2nd, 1966 at midnight. We went to the neighborhood convenience store, at that time it was called PAX, four snacks to eat at a place to hang out on the lake. It was three to four large vacant lots right on the lake not far from Doug's house in the old section of PSN. On the way there I had spotted a huge white owl with large oval black eyes just staring at me, it was the weirdest thing I had ever seen before, I could not take my eyes off of it, felt like I was being drawn to it and like it was there waiting for me. But Doug was way ahead of me and turned back asking if I was coming. I broke eye contact with the owl and yelled to Doug, yes I'm coming. When I looked back at the owl, it was gone. We got to Doug's favorite spot on the lake about 1.10 am, we did not even have a chance to get off our bikes when we both saw a saucer shaped craft with a white glow that looked like electricity was all around it and making no sound at all, in fact everything around us went quiet. We watched it land across the lake into some trees not making a sound, it landed where there was a clearing, where my neighbor Shag had a secret vegetable garden out behind PSN. Him and I would go out on the weekends and tend to the garden for whatever needed to be done. It was a very large garden surrounded by trees and brush, well hidden. So I knew my way around out in those woods before the UFO encounter and Doug and his friends went out in the woods all the time, so we both knew our way around in the woods. Anyway. Doug and I decided we would go out there to find out what landed there. Remember I was 11 and Doug was 13 and it was 1966 and outside of flying saucers on TV, well that's all we knew about them. And UFO was the last thing we thought it could be. Once we made our way to the dirt road that took us out to the woods and thick bush, it was really dark and I could hardly see where I was going. Being afraid I might run off the road, I kept my eyes glued to the road. Once we got out in the woods around where we saw it land, the road suddenly had a faint light on it and I remember thinking to myself, thank god the moon came out. But what I thought was the moon at first, it wasn't the moon, but also for a moment I believe we stopped moving, frozen like. I was looking and seeing the same part of the road as if we were floating without moving, next for an instant I remember feeling a weird sensation of numbing and tingling all over my body. It was from this point I don't remember a thing that happened. 
This all took place in about two seconds. It wasn't until Doug and I woke up on the vacant lot where we first saw the strange craft land. Once Doug and I fully awoke out of total confusion, Doug realized that it was 5.15 am. Doug and I had lost just less than four hours of time. We had no memory of what had happened to us in that three hours and 45 minutes of missing time. When we arrived at Doug's house, both of our mothers were asleep and our fathers were sitting at the dining room table talking, not once asking why we were so late. After remembering in 2017, I am beginning to wonder if they were abducted as well, I guess I will never know now. All of our parents have passed. I slept most of that Saturday after returning back home in Hialeah, Sunday morning my neighbor Shag asked me to go out to the garden to help him, as I often did. When we got to the area where the garden was located, he parked the truck on the dirt road and we walked the rest of the way. As we got closer to where the garden was located, we could see that all the vegetable plants were dead, dry out like something had sucked the life right out of them. By this time I had totally forgot about our abduction and seeing the UFO landing at that location, he just shook his head and we turned around and left, never to come back. In 2017, when I began remembering, that was when I put the garden incident with the alien abduction. It was years later when I was watching a video on how alien abductees sometimes see a huge white owl, just before they are abducted. That video brought back slowly memories of detailed information to me that I had forgotten. I soon remembered seeing the white owl and the UFO in the sky, right up to the abduction while riding our bikes. But to this day I cannot remember what took place during that missing time, and I would really like to know. 2017 and later when I realized that Doug and I had forgotten the whole incident within hours of our alien encounter, we both had forgotten the incident had ever happened. It was as if they program your mind to forget the whole incident. Five months after the encounter happened, our house we had built in PSN was finished. We moved into the new house in the new section called Coral Point on the, the third lake just a mile northeast of Doug's house, that took place on the first week of December of 1966. I am not sure if the abduction continued in my teens. It's very possible because there were nights when I would wake in sweating after having a very vivid dream that seemed so real. I can remember sometimes feeling like I was flying or floating in the air. I remembered seeing a military helicopter, I was flying alongside of it, seeing soldiers inside and it looked like they were ready for combat. I remember having dreams like this one, but somehow different each time. There were other times I would wake with a pain in my lower abdomen that would take a few minutes to go away. Of course, these dreams would only happen while I was asleep, making it almost impossible to see missing time. Later on in my life, I found that I was suffering from PTSD. I have been treated for PTSD since 1994. That's when I was diagnosed with. I always avoided close contact with other people, I first sense is that, I can't trust them. It doesn't matter if it's a single person or a group of people. I would never let myself get in a position of being or feeling trapped without getting very nervous to the point of freaking out, I hate being in small spaces. I always have avoided doctors when I could. Sometime in my twenties, I found I could sense other people's feelings, even without speaking to them and was very sensitive to evil places and things. I also found I could use this gift, I guess you could call it that, in my professional life as a biomedical engineer and later director of plant operations. The gift made it easier to diagnose and repair hospital repairs. I have an area on my left side of my head where it looks as if I had a head injury or a scoop that possibly was taken during my encounter with aliens, I never realized that I had it until I began to lose my hair. After the encounter, I found I was obsessed with watching sci-fi movies and TV shows. I was drawn to anything paranormal, plus I was always drawing images of aliens and UFOs. I did this even during classes between 6th and 8th grade. Going into 9th grade, I began to come out of my dream world the encounter put me into and finally started taking school and my life more serious. I have tried several times through social media to find Doug, 
but last year I managed to find his younger sister, she told me that Doug had passed away two years before. I always hoped to find him before that had happened, so we could come from what had happened to us that night in 1966.